So the Christian apologist Anthony Rogers had a debate with Shabir Ali on the topic of salvation according to the Bible. As part of that conversation, Dr. Shabir Ali made some really interesting comments. Comments that I would have expected to come from an atheist and not a theist. In fact, Sam Shamoon uploaded a video saying, Shabir Ali is no longer a Muslim, where they point out these comments. Let's have a watch and see what he said. And uh, that brings us to another question about the pre-scientific uh, view that gave rise to this idea, like Paul thinking that Adam was the first man. Nowadays, scientists will not say that Adam was the first man. Like what we think about when we think of man, if we think Homo sapiens, then Homo sapiens go back to about 200,000 uh, years. And uh, some would think that uh, Adam maybe was not even the Homo sapien. Maybe he was a Homo erectus. In any case, even if we say Homo sapien, uh, then as we trace uh, our genes back, uh, you know, we realize that there was never a time when there was only one man and uh, one woman that could be called human. They were part of a community that uh, would have comprised some seven to, to 10,000 uh, people. We can say that God chose one, and the Islamic view is that God chose Adam. God chose him, chose him. So he must have been part of the community for God to choose him from out of that community and uh, to make him a prophet to preach to, uh, to the others. Then the question is about why this uh, earth? The question about location. Um, you know, the, our earth is uh, just a small part of our galaxy, which is one part, a small part of the universe. It's in a suburb. Like if the Son of God is going to come to do something so major, um, why would he do it here on this earth as opposed to, uh, let's say, uh, you know, in, in the center of the, of the galaxy, even if we can think about the center of the of the galaxy. And if Jesus comes to our galaxy to die, what about other galaxies? There could be other Earths out there uh, with intelligent life similar to other to ours. People may have been committing sins in on the other star, uh, stars and planets. And uh, uh, in that case, they too, if this is the only solution, if only blood is going to satisfy God. So to address what he says about evolution, it's great that he's acknowledging what the scientists is saying and confirming that it is correct and then trying to see how he can fit that into the Quran. As Yasser Qadi once mentioned, evolution is a silver bullet against the Quran and Sunnah. It's a huge problem because there's too many statements that explicitly say Adam was made out of clay, that he was made with God's hands and so on and so forth. So to try to reconcile them is silly, but it's his prerogative. How does he do this? Probably by throwing out or reinterpreting the hadith in some way or form. Now the other part. My mouth just dropped when I heard this. I couldn't believe what Shabir was saying. This is like the meme, God's favorite galaxy, God's favorite star, God's favorite planet. And then we can add God's favorite country, God's favorite prophet. Shabir is of course right. Looking at a map of the universe, we are in some random, insignificant, backwater part of the galaxy. Nowhere significant. If you could consider that the centermost part was more relevant or important in some regard, we are literally in the middle of nowhere. This is a harsh reality, a bitter pill to swallow. Many ancient people used to naively think that we are the center of the universe, that the sun goes around the earth, that we are special, and that everything was made for us. It's not surprising that they thought this way. They looked up and they saw the sun going around the earth, and they saw when they moved their heads that the stars don't move much because of how far away they are. So it is what looks like a solid sky, a firmament. And that's exactly what most of the holy books say. Gods or the God that raised up firmaments high above our heads. Sky that's held up without any pillars you can see. Sun and moon going in an orbit. Two oceans, one in the sky and one below us. So when we started to learn more about the universe and how we fit in, it puts things in perspective. Hey, maybe we're not so important after all. We weren't created by God specially. We evolved. Atheists often bring up these points and they really fit because the model of a universe that's dominated by more black holes and emptiness than examples of life really does seem to be a godless universe. By the way, if you're new here, don't forget to subscribe and like the video. Shabir has somehow reconciled these two ideas and even thought it was worth bringing up in the debate. 
I'd like to ask Dr. Shabil, if our planet is not relevant enough to send the Son of God, couldn't we also ask, is it relevant enough to send the final messenger of God? Unless Shabil is claiming that there are other final messengers sent to other species and there's other Qurans, and the Quran that we have is only Allah's final revelation to humanity and jinns, not to other planets and creatures. But now we're getting into serious sci-fi territory. Like if the Son of God is going to come to do something so major, um, why would he do it here on this earth as opposed to, uh, let's say, uh, you know, in, in the center of the, of the galaxy, even if we can think about the center of the, of the galaxy. Shabir, if you watch this video, please do tell us why this wouldn't apply to Islam as well. Or do you believe in Muslim aliens, alien prophets and so on? And by the way, I disagree with Tam Shamoon's title of his video saying Dr. Shabir Ali is not Muslim, as he's obviously still Muslim. But of course, we have the right to ask, what about Islam? Wouldn't the same questions apply there as well? In conclusion, apologists like Dr. Shabir Ali and Dr. Yu Ross really have to twist and re-metaphor and reinterpret the books in order to make them make sense with science. It's a good step in the right direction, but it would be better to be honest and admit that these books are man-made and full of error. We need to be honest and see them for what they are, mythology. Let's hope we see more Islamic scholars and apologists starting to put the Quran in the right place, not above science, but interpret it according to it, and to take these books less seriously. The more this happens, the better off we'll be. Thanks for watching. What do you think about Shabir's approach? Is it dishonest? Or is it better than fundamentalism? Leave a comment below with your thoughts. I'd love to see what you think. This is your friendly ex-Muslim Abdullah Samir signing out.